Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mage the Ascension, the Victorian Age. I hope you're all doing well today. I am your storyteller, Kelly. Are you seeing him? And I am very excited to be returning to uh, jolly old England, I suppose we could say. Um... <laughs> Let's not and say we did, though. Um, as we all are going back in time uh, to explore what other historic things these players can burn down. Hi. We said uh, we're, we're going to prepare to burn uh, Mr. James Morgan's house tonight. Well, it's not his house, but... Well, you know, where he is. I, I mean, at least... The characters in, in whatever scene's coming up probably deserve it more than some yeah. of the characters in the yeah. in some of those other scenes. Well, we will find that. Uh, so, folks, uh, before we begin, let's do a quick round of introductions. And uh, and uh, so, everybody say who you are, anything exciting, and, uh, and then when we get back to me, I will do my quick announcements, and then we'll start, starting with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. I use she, her pronouns, and I am playing Dr. Evelyn Taylor tonight. Uh, who also uses she, her pronouns. And I suppose for fun news, I voted today. <laughs> nice. Um, I don't normally vote, vote in municipal elections. I kind of forget about them, honestly. But I heard a lot of stuff from friends of friends who have kids and whatnot that a lot of uh, the potential school board trustee options were part of the slate that uh, were all about family values and good upstanding morals in the classroom, i.e., hiding the fact that they're anti-trans, anti-LGBTQ bigots and extreme right-wing. Yeah, I specifically so, made I sure like, that to select all nine of my op, like all nine people so that- Me too. I made a list of who not to pick and then the ballot even had that their slate on it so I didn't yeah. have to worry about that. It told me who they were. I was like, That's yes, beautiful. I did all that research for nothing. That's beautiful. That's I love okay. it when they say things like keep perverts out of the classroom and that's like, really? Right? I mean, like- It's just like, well- all right, are you talking about the registered sex offenders list? They wouldn't be in the classroom anyways. Oh, mm -hmm. you're talking about... Like, there's a reason there's a list. People, people like us. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, so well, congratulations. Uh, tonight's going to be a fun night for you. Moving on to Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy. I use she, her, they, them pronouns, and I'm playing Chastity Prudence Goodwin, the Cult of Ecstasy slash celestial chorister and it is day uh 18 of not having my bed Ouch. paradox also the internet hates me with a passion yeah, so apparently. amy's having a bit of problems with the internet uh so once again paradox strikes mm -hmm. and uh i i hope for your bed soon um if you do mm -hmm. need a place to crash ever let us know about because our guest room is is open when it's not being used but i will family. let you know once they start working on the uh the bathroom and the door to the bathroom comes off for an unknown Excuse indeterminate length of time man i would just make that uncomfortable for everybody um okay so do you have anything you that, that's happy that you want to talk about um you can say no it's fine y'all look wonderful oh that's true and dirty Excited. Except for chastity, chastity is game. surprising. Chastity, go splash yourself with some blood. Go stab it's somebody. The room and the all my makeup is, you know, hidden. So no, no, I just like go they... stab someone and <laughs> go stab. Someone. Yeah, just go I stab. Actually... Like, you I like know. They put away my... your bed, but they left the blood room alone. That's probably for the best. <laughs> you don't mess with the blood room, guys. The blood room stays the way it is in this family. Um, well, happy I to have you. Just go here. hang out in the basement then. Yeah, you have a creepy Honestly. ass basement. Um, all right, down to Jen. Hi, I'm Jen, and I play uh, Josephine Carrington, our resident Order of Hermes, uh, who likes to burn things, apparently, even though she's not House Flambeau. She is, in fact, House Tharsis. Um, but she's descended from a line of House Flambeau, so I guess it just runs in her blood. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we both use she, her pronouns that Josephine does not care. Uh, and a happy thing. Uh, had a fun meeting earlier today you that did I'm going to be vague some... about. You're going to be vague about. And uh, folks, if you're on the Patreon, you're going to hear a long chat with me and Jen uploaded in the next 48 hours that is supposed to be about role-playing games, but is largely about like <laughs> automobiles, fitness, and ADHD. Yep. It's weird. Because... 
you put two ADHD people in a room and tell them to talk about stuff. Are they going to stay on topic? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> All right. Uh, over to Robin. Hi, um, I'm Robin. I use she, her pronouns as well as Darcy, our member of the Verbena, um, which Darcy tonight might have slight horse to tone to her because it it's smoky today up island again um um and i realize i have a nice like i've got that like voice right, right, right there yeah okay. um but yeah um exciting stuff my computer is still my computer was dropped off at fedex on friday thursday mm -hmm. so and nadpod is off. this week I'm so excited for Nadpod. You have no freaking I'm clue. So jealous you guys are going to that. <laughs> I'm just like I have like my costume. I had I made mushrooms. I made like I have a wig. I'm cosplaying, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be good. And I'm super excited for that. I got, oh, I got my vaccine on Friday. A t-shirt, Jen. Pardon me. You want us to bring you back a t-shirt? No, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I actually do, I haven't listened to Nadpod, but I just know all the people on it from other things. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Because a ton of them Ooh. are on College Humor slash Dropout, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Dimension Twenty. It's it's so good. I'm so excited. I'm, um, yeah. So my computer's still MIA. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, Kelly, again for this 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 thing. It's it. it, it it has some it has some fun but it's it, it'll make it until i get more answers <laughs> all right uh christine you made a fun noise other fun thing i forgot this is my first test for new headphones for this for streaming they are the bone conduction ones so they do not go in my ear holes they sit outside and yep. they're basically hidden and i have no cords now just kind of exciting yep. and uh, so you have the smaller version of the one that robin and i use and mm -hmm. uh, cat because i have as well. a smaller head and uh they're real they're real solid actually like they're really good they pick, yeah. up, they pick up the mic a little bit so you just got to be careful if we hear a doppel um and finally i just wanted to say everybody that special announcement we are it's not really world of darkness related but you're going to hear the pitch first anyway uh dork tales has been approached to do a month-long partnership with a kickstarter from elder brain which is a 5e uh publishing house like they do third party 5e stuff and their new book um torrent of the spell hoarder uh so if you type kickstarter exclamation mark kickstarter uh inside of the chat uh or check in any of the videos uh there is a link oh and if you use that link and then go pledge we get a portion of the pledge with no cost to you which is really nice because basically we get an advertising fee which great i can spend that on two new games worth of art that are in development right now because my god, the art is very expensive. And thank you so much for pledging, Soul. Hey, the Prophet of Woe is here. Fantastic. Good to see you. Prophet uh, of Woe. First time in stream, apparently. First time in stream. Whoa. Awesome. I saw that I got an email earlier that they had followed, and I was like, nice. Hey, Papa Goth, good to see you. All right, folks. Uh, any last minute questions, comments, concerns before we begin? Mm, that was nice and yeah. easy. Okay, so start time is at 7.17. Let's kick it. Okay. Adjust my tie, and let's do it to it. All right. The building burns behind you with some aplomb. Although you manage to course the fire into a bit of a lulled state to aid your escape, it soon redoubled and began to consume the old stable. By then, however, you had already met up with Dr. Vivian Freeman and had again boarded your carriage and made haste toward the place of your meeting. As you rode across the city, the smell of smoke, blood, and other unmentionable substances clinging to your clothing, those of you that still had some. Dr. Freeman opened a slat and thrust a horse blanket in toward you. To help you cover yourself up, ma'am. He says to you, Josephine. We 
should be there in about 15 minutes. Luckily, not too much traffic this time of night. This time of night. We're getting really good at setting buildings on fire. Action, you are getting very good at it. Or you three. I have set no buildings on fire. All right, so point. those two then. Yes, those two. I mean, but... my mom is host Flambo. It kind of makes sense. We should potentially try to avoid it a little bit in London, hopefully. We don't want to have another 1666. London burned down. Oh. Yeah, I, I missed it that one. It is very made of wood. Yes. You'd think they'd change that if it had already burned down once. It's cheap. Yeah, I was going to say I don't I don't think they have the the funds to make, burn, build it with anything other. But yes, it would make sense that they would have built it with stone or something. Well, I mean a great deal of the richer houses are stone. Are we really just ignoring the whole monstrosity we just dealt with and that yeah you 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 picked out a heart as well and you 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 got um <laughs> you got some 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 blood on you right right about uh, um oh everywhere yeah, you, you do. Um, jo josephine's gonna kind of reach mm. towards chastity with like a corner of the blanket and just go for some of the blood to wipe it just smear it around a little more a little bit yeah you um, know i think maybe um maybe i need some some new gloves these ones are um sticky think we all need an outfit change yeah especially um um josephine you are are quite naked underneath that horse blanket jassy's gonna peel her gloves off and they're i feel like they're kind of like starting to like dry in some places so you get that like sticky like ugh. squelch mm -hmm. squelch i mean sometimes this sort of thing just happens this sort of thing just happens? What? Well, I mean, what? yes, what? in any experiment, knows. there's all sorts of variables that can go wrong. <laughs> yeah. And sure. while her direction was not well thought out, the fact that she managed it is quite intriguing. <laughs> hey. Right. Intriguing. That's the sword I would use. Sure. You ride for a bit longer. Moving through the cobbled streets of London, the smell of horse shit and old stale smoke clinging to every surface. It's at least a different smell than the abomination you had just been surrounded by. Um, and Christine, I believe that is one point of aggravated damage from the, from the, uh... Oh, that's right. It is ag, sorry. Cool. So... I are... looked at the thing. It's pencil marks and pencil marks and low lighting mm -hmm. are hard to read. So let's see, just doing a quick check of how hurt I have everybody. Josephine has four bashing, Chastity has two points of bashing damage, and Darcy has two points of bashing, one lethal. So, and lethal. I think at least top. some of my bashing is paradox induced. That is true. You are pretty bruised up from paradox. Is anybody. Which that going... was a great question because it reminded me that I did not have my book in front of me. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice. Um, is anyone doing anything on the way to your meeting? 
I think Evelyn puts her shawl around her as if she is not filthy and disheveled and straightens her cuffs and her collar and whatnot. At least none of her clothes are really ripped. They're just stained all to hell, smell like death, and have soot all over them. Josephine oh, and her own blood, I believe, because I think she got hit in the side. Josephine Artley uh, arranges the uh, the blanket around her. <laughs> um, so, question for you, Kelly. Yes. Um, I do believe it's been a few episodes, but I mentioned that Bran is with me in the carriage. I left I left him with oh, that's fair. Um, Doctor. So Hoosh. as you're as you're having this conversation, he's curled up in your lap. Yeah. Can I do the dumpy dumpy paradox thing into him? <laughs> Because as a uh, quite a dot of familiar or no, just curious. Yes, you may. I've, I've never you want to take? You want to feed him a point of paradox? How, how many points of paradox or how many points of familiar he, is he again? Is he just um, one point? He is. Hold on. Uh, yeah, he is one point, so I think he can absorb he can do, up to five points of paradox. I but believe. that's per month, right? Uh, per week. Per week. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how do you do this? Do you just tell him that you need some help? Um. Well, I think because she also has um, the entro- entropic merciful residence going on. So mm-hmm. that, that again. It kind of clings to you kind of like a feeling, like a vibe. Okay. Like that's kind of the, it's your, it's the mood that you're exuding magically. It does affect oh, okay. others and affects you as well. So um, assisted suicide would fall under this as would okay. putting things out of their misery, etc. Like that's the entropic yeah. level of it. Um, so I think I'm guessing that's something that, that Bran can probably like, especially as a cat, I'm sure he can and my familiar, I'm sure he can feel that magic is mm-hmm. is a bit off on Darcy, so she's going to be like Um Yeah. Um, I, I'm I believe Mai was um, was mentioning to me that um, as an actual familiar, you, you're able to kind of absorb some magical... Uh, oh, you're trying to feed me? I, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Is it, would you like to, was, is it, is it kind of like feeding? Mm, kind of like feeding me poison, but yes. All right. Um, I just, I feel like something bad is going to happen and I don't want to really, um, kill, um. He looks up at you and kind of behind you in that way that cats do, like they can see something dangling over your head. Remind me, it's been a while since I voiced Bran. What, what, what was his, was his voice very deep? Was it like a Sean Connery voice? Meow. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was. I was going to that say meow was on point. Yeah, the <laughs> meow was right on point. Meow. Yeah. Well, you're not wrong. You've yep, got. That was it. You've got a lot of uh, taint hanging over your head. Uh, would you mind um, dealing with? Potentially, just just a little bit. I really don't want to to do have anything happen, and I would um, kill Evelyn's husband or anything. Um, we're going to go Why, meet a bunch le- of people. She left him. What does she care? Wow. We've just been burning a lot of buildings, and I don't really want to start another fire. Mm. Fair. Come here. And he'll like still like paw his way up your chest and kind of like stand nose to nose with you, and will lean forward and go right next to your mouth, and anyone present is going to feel like the air shift and get a little chilly, and you'll actually see this mist rise and suck out of Darcy's lungs into the cat's mouth. <laughs> Ugh, that's awful. Um, you feel much better. Nice. Uh, yes, you are down to four points of paradox now from eight. Intriguing. (sighs) 
Oh, thank you. I feel a little bit like... Uh, how did my kind of put that? The bit of the 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 universe's uh, balance wanting to come and get it. I feel a little bit like I can push that a bit for a little bit longer. Uh huh. Good to know. He'll curl up on your lap again and go back to sleep. Yeah, Doris will pat him. You'll hear a, as the slide opens again near the driver's door, or the driver's seat, I should say. We're almost there. Uh, Miss Josephine, are you going inside? Is that your intent? Was thinking of it. If Evelyn wants me there. There's a, um, there's a spare blouse and skirt under the seat. A bit big for you, but you could probably pin it. I wouldn't mind the support. Well, oh, if your goal is to unsettle anyone in there, could just go in like this, but... I don't know that they would let you in. Think Regardless the of, of in. the Lord's invite. Hmm. Yeah, we're all kind of looking a little, we've looked better for sure, but, uh... I feel like there's a difference between looking disheveled and naked. I'm wearing a blanket. And... It's up to you. It's not really your color. Yeah. I can change if you want me to. We like you the way you are. Two minutes. And we'll be there. Figure your own stuff out. Shunk. I guess we're not going to ask why the good doctor has an extra pair of, of ladies' clothes underneath the carriage, are we? Well, considering what you can do, Darcy, I'm not surprised. <laughs> when we stop, I'll change. A moment later, the carriage will rock to a halt. The hero, whoa, outside. Looking out your windows, you're in a fairly well-to-do part of London. You're not quite sure exactly where, but the houses here are well-spaced, each having at least a, a small plot of land outside of it. Let me not much, mind you, enough to perhaps park a carriage or walk a few feet. The buildings are still fairly tightly packed, enough for a, a, perhaps a, an alley to go between them were there not fences of wrought iron separating them. The building that you have approached next to is actually quite large and has old Grecian pillars supporting its entryway. On a placard in the front, you can see a simple sign that says <clears throat> The Society of Antiquities. Arwen's Lodge. If uh, any of you are at all have, uh, if any of you have a point of Ooh, two points of esoterica or two points of occult. Uh, Arwan is a Celtic king uh, who in some legends is associated with hunting dogs and stag. Oh! I do not. I have one oh, Sorry, point. Aaron. Aaron. What am I saying? Arwan. Aaron. 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 Um, Darcy has two points of esoterica. Yeah, you would probably know about that. Yeah. Um, so Aaron... So he was a he was a was an old king basically like it's it's uh, kind of like myth or uh, was like... the king of the other world realm of Anwen 
uh, features prominently in the first branch of uh, certain stories and alluded to in the fourth. Uh, later tradition, the role of King Anwen was largely attributed to the Welsh psychopomp. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce half this stuff. Um, uh, but if you if you look it up, it is it is spelled like Aaron, rhyming phonetically with Ron. A R A W N. So some things you'd probably know about him, but. Oh yes, I see. I see. Is it I pronounced see. Arun? Interesting. Arun. Okay. The chat yeah. is saying it's pronounced Arun. Yeah, if you look at the, if the you phonetics, look at I'm never good with, All right, Arun. So Arun. Arun's Lodge. Huh. All right, thank thank you for the thank you for the fix. Oddly enough, it's pronounced Bob. Okay, cool. There ah, we yes, we're at Bob's Lodge. I'm gonna be corrected by so many Irish people. I know I've been getting I've been getting stuff for for mice, even though I the, looked up mice. The, the the Irish do not truck with people mispronouncing impossible words. I know I'm scared I'm scared playing an Irish character now. Just, just... all right. Anyway. Yep. Uh, um. Ah. Arun, Arun's Lodge. Interesting name. Uh. I wonder if they do much uh, hunting here. It's all about a, a hunter using hounds. Well, what if are... anybody of the Lord status is also part of it. There, many of them are extensively focused on the ridiculousness of hunting. Mm. So, remind me again. I know it's only been a few hours, but a lot has happened in the past few hours. Why, why, why are we meeting your husband again? What was the dude's name again? It was Lord Macduff? Lord Macduff. Okay, I got it right. I thought that might have been wrong, but sweet. Uh, well, Lord Macduff arranged the meeting and invited. So... I suppose... That would be rather rude to not make it. And I'd be interested to know what he intends to say. Does sound like it will be interesting. There's a knock on the back of the carriage. Ah, your lordship, you'll hear outside. Are the ladies decent? <laughs> Just waiting going for to everyone open to get out, so. The door. <laughs> yeah. And get out as if she was not filthy. You look like you've been in quite a pickle. Journey, it's you'll been see a the very trying night. Uh, Lord Macduff is standing outside, dressed in a great cloak, um, uh, a beaver skin hat, uh, a beaver skin top hat, and um, some some quite nice finery with his walking stick in front of him. Kind of leers down to look at you, crinkles up his uh, crinkles up his lips, uh, which kind of has the effect of drawing that large, like kind of dome of a beard up in a weird angle like it seems like it's been quite interesting for you yes I think Evelyn's shoulders are back her head is up and she's very holding herself very stiffly and just like been a trying bloody night sort of thing aye it'll be good to do get it out of the way 
Then you don't have to worry about him again. Yes. I suppose we'll see what, what occurs. You look lovely, ma'am. The thought is appreciated. Nothing wrong with a little dirt. Sorry, what was that? I didn't catch Nothing it. Nothing wrong with a little dirt. You should come to Glasgow sometime. I suppose it's just more the, the rotting refuse that adorns my skirt that I'm more concerned for. Oh, that's more of a Edinburgh type of accoutrement. I had heard that before, yes. Uh, he looks inside of the carriage and offers a hand out to the next of you. I think Chas will probably take it. Being kind of tentative with the sticky still hand. kind of sticky blood hand, just like mm. Mm. he's wearing gloves as well, so it's not as big of a deal. He'll look at that and very busy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's let's call it that. Miss Goodwin, good to see you. Uh, Miss Carrington. Hey. Uh, adventurous outfit. I'm going to change. I'm just oh. waiting for. I. Between us, I'd like to see the look on their faces. I thought that, that too, but I was overruled. Well, I mean, My if we have the support of Lord Macduff, then by all means, we won't be kicked out. This is true. I've been kicked out of better places than this. <laughs> Darcy. You, you don't look like you've bruised too much. Um, I heal quick. Yeah, it'd be a shame to ruin your, your, your face with... Um, oh, you're planning to kick me again? No, no I'm just... I'd take my hat off first. <laughs> No, Come. no, no. Uh, Darcy's gonna awkwardly <laughs> grab her hand and look a bit flustered. Uh, no, that's. I'll, I'll try to avoid that. I'll keep both feet on the ground unless, unless some bloke really deserves it. Yeah. If a gentleman comes and sweeps you off his feet, then uh, sweeps you off your feet, then uh, I suppose he's got. Uh, well, he'll, more than his troubles worth. I'm sure you, you're worth it though. I am my lord. Uh, and Darcy's gonna like. Well. Um, should I shut the door? Should I leave it open, Joe? You can shut the door. I'll change. I feel like perhaps the focus should be on Evelyn rather than on what I'm wearing. I suppose so. Uh, you shouldn't have any reason to fear. Though, um, do imagine it's going to be quite peaceful. I enjoy your changing. Just jinxed it, didn't he? Oh, Chaz totally. is like to, over to Darcy. <laughs> At least I can I mean, stop wearing this. <laughs> I mean, probably. I. Uh, I didn't make any sacrifices beforehand to ensure that uh, this would be an easy night. Should I have? Probably. At this mm. point, maybe. It has not been a good... Um, it's been eventful, for sure. Hmm. That's putting it lightly. Well... should be interesting, at least. They will be expecting us. They do not have a throw a party, though. If I don't mind saying so. That's something to look forward to. Hey, Evelyn, just... Yes? Do you want us to be nice? to him or how do you 
as we go, how, how do you want us to handle this? I mean, it's, we've already got some intimidation factor, but. Well, I suppose the best would be to f- be forgiving of whatever he says. At least to get a conversation completed. He's not always the most talented at keeping his foot out of his mouth. Okay, so I, I, I hate that I have to clarify this, but at what point does the conversation count as completed? You know what, I'll just follow your lead. Yeah. I honestly don't know at this point. Is there some sort of code word you want to use? For like, all right, we need to go, kind of. Oh, no, I'll just say. Oh, okay. Well. Josephine will will change pretty quickly and uh, just try and pin the slightly too large clothing. It's not that way. much bigger. It's like a size yeah. or two bigger at yeah. most. Um, like it would be, it would fit on a woman that was, well, how tall is Josephine? Because this is sized for someone who's like, probably like, I assume Joe probably wears like a size five or six at the most. Just... She's yeah, but she's tall. Mm. So okay. so then it's actually not that much bigger than you then if okay. it's tall. This is for someone who's about like five ten, five eleven. Okay, yeah, she's only an inch or two shorter than that. So yeah, so it just like it you just tuck it into the skirt. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, she'll jump out like buttoning the last couple buttons on the collar. Mm. It's almost the midnight hour. All right. So, the witching hour. Yeah, that one. So, they should be expecting the five of us. Six. Dr. Freeman says, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting out in the carriage. People are going to think that I actually am your driver if I stay out here. And I'm not about to send my mentee into a house of uh, vipers? Nah. Well, by all means. Besides, Fran, you're in charge of the carriage. I probably, probably should be. I'm the smartest one here, anyway. The cat will say and climb back into the carriage. <laughs> carriage will take care of itself if it's past a certain time. The doctor will quickly take a shot of something that he has on a bandolier at his waist and will lean in and whisper into his horse's ears. If I'm not back by the time you hear that bell strike three times. He stomps his foot hard against the cobblestones. One, two, three. Ride back home. Take a long route. Good girls. Hmm. What? Basic arithmetic's pretty easy to teach a horse. The bad at subtraction, though. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming they would just say nay to that. One of the horses will whinny, like emphatically at that moment and stomp its hoof a couple of times. Approval or dramatic like disagreement with you, Darcy. But Evelyn will Evelyn will turn to face the the house club thing and just kind of like, all right, twitch her skirt straight and shall we? Let's Onward. Walking up to the front door, it has an ancient, it a, an ancient knocker on the front of it, placed and 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 rimmed with all manner of vegetation. It looks like a symbol of the god Pan. Hmm. And as Charming. you approach, well, sort of, until you notice what the knockers are. The knocker, this this knocker must be hundreds of years old. It's cast in copper. And the knockers that have made a groove into the side of this ancient door 
are Pan's testicles. As I said, charming. This is certainly a boys' club, isn't it? Certainly some kind of club. Hmm. No, they're diversifying. Soon women will be everywhere. The Lord will grab Pan's balls and knock tri- thrice. There's something quite amusing about you having to grab um Yes. Y- yeah. Hmm. A moment later the door will open and you will see that there is there is a, a tall man, just under six feet tall or so, with reddish brown hair and a well groomed mustache in his late 20s, standing in the doorway. He's dressed in uh, in a vest that outlines decent musculature. Broad chest, um, strong build, but not hulking. Like, very, like, probably like a, like, a, like, kind of you would picture like a boxer in the Victorian era. He looks your direction, looks you up and down, and his shirt sleeves are rolled over slightly haired forearms, and... Hmm. You're the ones we've been expecting. That is correct. Hmm. More women every night. Welcome inside. Um, please. I am here to escort you to meet the rest of the visitors. Wonderful. Thank you. Evelyn will sail in. <laughs> okay. Uh, as anybody with three points of perception or more are going to notice that this uh, this man is uh, quite um, quite well dressed, um, but his shoes have a lot of scuff marks on them, like he's used to running in them. Uh, and also, he has some type of badge of station in his waistcoat. Now, Scotland Yard is. St- still in its formation at this point so you probably might not have seen a badge like that but it looks like an investigator's badge cast in tin well good to meet you good to have you come inside he has a very slight british accent more neutral than anything and you walk inside of the main hall and it is opulent the entirety of the place stretches above you. The main hall actually has a giant area from whence you, once you walk up to the second floor, you may look down and gaze upon visitors entering. He gives you a quick tour. Uh, to the right here, we have the morning room. And uh, to the left, matching another morning room, both face the sunrise and are quite lovely. Um, let's see. Oh, no, I'm looking at the map the wrong way from this old one. Uh, so to here on the right, we have the morning room. And uh, if you are so interested, at the back left, we do have a wonderful billiards room. Besides that, everyone else is on the top floor. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Benjamin. Benjamin Gardner. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Gardner. Pleasure Pleasure. to meet you as well. And, um, let's see if I remember correctly. Josephine Carrington, Chastity Goodwin, Evelyn Taylor, of course. Good to see you again, I suppose. And, uh, Darcy Harkness. Does he look familiar? He does not. She gives him a bit of a questioning look of when he refers to her. Make me an intelligence and politics role. Does deductive apply? Yes. (laughs) 
What's the penalty if I don't have a politics spot? Oh, you normally can't roll. So instead, I'll just, because this is um, an internal politics thing that you would know about, I would say uh, just roll your intelligence and it'll be at a higher difficulty. Okay, what is the difficulty? Difficulty's gonna be eight. Uh, that's two successes. Uh, you will recognize him. He is a member of one of the policing units of the Order of Reason. Probably a lantern. Mm. Um, but, uh, he is... He has been at several events that you've been at, acting as security or just keeping watchful eyes out on things. Uh, he's one of their younger members. So he does a lot of field work, as far as you understand. I almost didn't recognize you, Mr. Gardner. Uh, it's the mustache. It's new. Ah, uh, that would do it. Sorry to hear about your recent uh, career change. Well, some things become unavoidable at certain times. There's only so much somebody will take. Hmm. Fair. And uh, the other two, I know Dr. Vivian Freeman. And you are... I'm uncertain. Macduff will step forward. Lord Scrimger Macduff. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Gardner. Macduff. Ah, from up north. I, uh, I heard you were shorter. Well, it's best for your enemies not to know exactly what you look like. Hmm. Charmed. Shall we? Come along, yeah. butlers. And uh, as he says that, another man will step out of, of the shadows of the uh, of the morning room. Uh, now, this guy is thick. He's about six foot two, six foot three, and built like a linebacker. Dressed in a black suit that is um, and uh, kind of like a burnt red uh, undervest. Similar mustache, um, hair kind of quaffed to the side and slicked back. Just making sure that there wasn't any problem. This is my associate, Henry. Just making sure that you weren't uh, trying anything uh, incendiary. Henry concludes. Do you follow uh, Benjamin into the building? Well, it appears he knows where we're supposed to be going. I wasn't expecting quite so many other order of reason, but uh, I will trust in having the number of people I have with me. Oh, Stronger uh, in numbers. I wouldn't worry. The, um, the powers that be know that you are coming tonight, and, um, well, they've wanted to make a, uh, an interesting night for you. Come. And he'll lead you up the main stairwell. Bessie will mumble as they go up. Hmm. All right. So, from here, um, please, entreat to join me in the coffee room. Uh, you're the you're the or the leader um, or guide ex escort um do you have any coffee it's been quite a a long evening for us do we have any coffee uh of course we do hi sir is someone asking for coffee you hear from inside of the coffee room got a fresh batch brewed up are they here? Uh, yes, sir, they are. And by 
Jove, I've been looking forward to meeting with them. Uh, and there is a strut that just thrump, thrump, thrump that uh, follows out into the hallway as a broad um, triangular man with a an immense mustache that trails down along uh, to his chin and along his jawline, but cutting out uh, the actual chin itself. A nice bright red colonial mustache. Dressed in military pants, the heights with the kind. Uh, now, reminder: the types with the really big, like saddlebags on the thighs. A vest. Cavalry pants. Cavalry. Thank you. Cavalry pants, as well as um, a uh, a jacket that is uh, uh, the same khaki color. We'll step out into the hallway. I say, oh you. <laughs> Yes, you're the one that got away. Good to see you. He thrusts his hand out, uh, kind of between you, and takes the uh, the hand of Dr. Freeman. <laughs> the one who got away. I tell you, Portia has not shut up about you. Very excited to see you tonight. Oh, and the rest of you, you're the other one that got away, and you're... Hmm... Well, I don't recognize any of the rest of you, but you have a cattle crop on you. Mm. So you can't be all bad. Pleasure to meet you, Ulysses Aerosmith, 1st Regiment. Do I recognize him? Um, you can make me an intelligence roll. Okay. As, as I really shouldn't get some out, politics points. <laughs> Joseph, Josephine just kind of tilts right and goes, 1st Regiment of what? <laughs> Ah, the Void Seekers Imperial Brigade. We go where no one else does, and we kick all of their teeth in. <laughs> Was that uh, difficulty of eight again? Difficulty of eight, yeah. Three. Uh, you will recognize him. Uh, he was at a symposium right when you moved to Britain, but he has been on field holiday and has field holiday, field assignment, and has the deeply burn tanned skin to prove it. Mm -hmm. He um, he is basically a, a traveling regimental adventurer who sails into places where the British should not be and uh, acquires goods, services, people, and fame and wealth for the Empire uh, by doing things in um, a very uh, militaristic slash Indiana Jones style of doing things. He is a treasure hunter, explorer, and... Uh, Antiqu antiquitarian. Ant antiquarian, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and uh, as I should say, there's coffee on the pot, and uh, it would be great to you know, be able to uh, listen to some of your tales as well. I hear that you are from Concordia. Indeed. Hmm. Haven't been. I'd like to. Maybe bring some mm. of my men over there. See if we enjoy the place, eh? <laughs> I bet you'd give us a run for our money. We would. Mm. How many of those Akashiyama do you have over there? I had a, quite an encounter with some of those recently. We sailed into Hong Kong and uh, had a bit of a, a bit of a boxing match with some of them. I tell you, they do quit hit quite hard. Half of his jaw is now made of steel, fresh pressed uh, and laced with a bit of titanium. Makes me quite mm. a titan, don't you say? <laughs> I imagine you have uh, quite a good trick of a nutcracker, then. Oh, my nuts haven't been cracked. <laughs> Did you want coffee? Says a feminine voice across the room. And you will see a rather plainly dressed woman 
um, who actually looks kind of similar to Evelyn in many ways. Um, more of a cherry-shaped face. Think kind of like uh, a little more Jenna Coleman, a little more porcelain doll-faced, but with a very similar hairstyle with it piled up with, with ringlets. Um, dressed in, in very simple clothes, white top, high skirt that goes up halfway to her breasts, um, that goes all the way down to a pair of um, very tall leather boots. Um, not that you can see how far they go up, but you can see, you can, you can, you guys know the style. Um, and um, as well as a pair of long gloves that go all the way up to where her, um, her sleeves are actually kind of like tied in in a bunch over at the very top of her, uh, of her arm where the shoulder meets basically right at the deltoid. Um, but her gloves reach all the way up. It appear to be made of some type of rubber. In fact, there's even a slight squeak of these white leather, white, pardon me, uh, white rubbered gloves as she pours cups of coffee. Um, coffee would be lovely, thank you. Do well. help yourself. Um, Josephine's gonna go, um, Get some coffee. Yeah, Darcy will as well. She'll she'll join mm. Josephine over there. Yeah, Chas is gonna kind of like hover, but then be like, I need coffee. Great. I would be happy to enjoy coffee. <clears throat> uh, if anyone would like to, just to get a sense of things, I would love a perception and empathy roll. Well, that sounds fun. Oh yes, I have so many dots. Uh, what, what's the penalty for this one when you don't have dots at it? Uh, it is. Uh, Why would I have first, empathy? <laughs> it's in the first column, right? So yeah, yeah. there is no penalty. The the lack of dice is the penalty. And none of our health has. Uh, none of the bashing has healed yet, right? None of the bashing has healed. Oh right. Whoops! I'm minus a dice. Does that. my detail oriented tie into this at all? No, because this is a a tone. This is a tone. You know what? Sure, it will. Okay. But only for one specific thing. Uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty six. Okay, that's two successes. Two okay. successes. Two. two successes. Three successes. Three. Jen, did you get Zero. any successes? Zero successes. Uh, so you just want this coffee so bad. And honestly, yeah. this is some of the fresher coffee that you've had in recent memory, definitely. <laughs> Do you like it? she says, and you'll notice now that, much like you, she has no accent. Hmm. It's very good. Thank you. Quite. I'm happy. Uh, it's fresh from Jakarta. Hmm. Brought in just this morning, actually. Roasted same day. There's a new chemical process that I've been working on in order to, um, no. It speaks for itself. The rest of you are going to notice that if Dr. Freeman could, um, he would, he has gone so white that he would be able to, uh, uh, move back to America, um, <laughs> the moment that he saw this woman, um, and, uh, has stammered, regained his composure, and re-entered the fray. Um, the Lord will just approach casually, take a drink, and uh, make sure that the, the ladies are served first. Besides that, you'll also get a sense that um, the Order of Reason members here seem, aside from, aside from butlers and gardener, seem pretty relaxed. And um, as the coffee is poured, she will take a look over across at uh, at Doctor Freeman, and will Vivian. Three sugars still. Yes, Portia, that would be fine, unless it's particularly acidic. Yes, I know. You look well. Hmm. Knew I recognized this shirt. 
It looks good on you. Better than its original owner. Well, the rest of the assembled personage should be here very shortly. In the meanwhile, please enjoy some coffee, and then we'll have some festivities. It should be a very pleasant evening, and you should be home or wherever you dwell by two or three. Maybe later if you want to um, make a nightcap out of it. What say? Now, why did you say, why did you pause and say home? We, we, we do sleep on, in beds in a nice house. Not in a coffin? I don't think I take your meaning there, darling. Oh, you truck with the supernatural. That means that you are in bed with all manner of vile monstrosities. Actually, I was just learning earlier tonight that there was an encounter with one such blood-sucking fiend that uh, uh, Mr. Butler, Gardner, and, and their other cohort had an encounter with just some months ago. Does that have anything to do with us? Oh. Then whatever works. Robin think, just got the reference. I just got the reference. <laughs> I got it from Gardner and then Benjamin. I was like, wait. I'm sorry. Oh God, I'm, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I just, I just, I just clicked in my head. What, I was what's like, funny is I wasn't in that game, nor have I seen that game, and I got it from the get. <laughs> <laughs> get go. I was like, is this? Oh, it is. Okay, to be fair, probably when everyone is introduced, that was when my computer yeah. screen was frozen. Yeah, true. So, yeah. for sure. It took me a second. So, yes, for those who don't know, there was a convention game for Onyx Pathcon where um, Jen was swapped out for Krista because of availability reasons, but it was a uh, order of reason game where all of the mage girls were cross playing as, as men of the order of reason, and it was quite good. It's on the YouTube right now if you if you haven't watched it. It was great, because actually the wig I had for my boy was the same color as Evelyn's. So it was just male Evelyn, mm -hmm. essentially. Ah, Evelyn. I, I keep meaning Evelyn. to watch it and just not having time, because I it's do want to see that one. It's a lot of fun, and I have to really thank uh, one of our patrons, uh, uh, or one of our supporters, Ink Goblin, for reminding me of some historical facts I forgot about England that set up the first half of the plot. <laughs> which is, which is, it's funny. It's a fun game. Yeah. Um, all right. Sorry, I just saw, I totally broke character because I totally just was like, oh. Yep. It's fair. Yep. And Evelyn will try and derail this um, accusatory conversation by uh, inquiring into the scientific aspects of coffee roasting. Not specifically what method she uses, but... What are the intricacies? Mm -hmm. And I... Oops. Sorry. I think Chas is just, like, kind of leaning back, either, like, against a wall or something. It's just kind of, like, watching, like, a hawk, because it's like, wait a second, you're being... Hmm. I don't like this. So she's just paying close attention. Well, Jakarta has uh, quite a few ways to do this. However, in the region there, I... Um, when I was traveling there, and... Of course, when I was traveling there along with um, Mr. Aerosmith, there is a particular chemical reaction that could be found in the location of a um, a certain feline's intestinal tract. There is a breed of feline, much similar to like a lemur or a macaque, um, at least in physiology, than an actual feline. They're quite strange, very interesting. Um, and yes, I know that a macaque is not the same as a feline, but they certainly resemble them. That exist primarily on a diet of coffee beans. However, their digestive system does not process the beans itself, just the husks and, uh, and so on. Uh, and what comes out uh, and can be cleaned from the excrement is a processed acidic bean. Hmm. So Delicious, isn't quite it? an acidic process at that point. And that Darcy's gonna spit out the coffee. Oh, well, Darcy, you've eaten worse things. It's been cleaned. It's been boiled. Are you Jesus. saying I'm eating 
something that's come out of a cat's behind. No, absolutely not. You're drinking it. You've had haggis, haven't you? I I have had haggis, and I it's it's quite an it's more of an Irish. Yeah, it's it's about both. It, it's it's more of a more of an Irish it's, thing. It's more of a Scottish thing. Yeah, that's what it. I meant to say. I meant to say I, Scottish. Did you forget? All right. I forgot where I was from for a second. Don't worry. And I would argue, the Lord will say that haggis is a bit further away. Well, than I mean, it's all part arse. of the same system, though. What is haggis? It's a sheep's uh, stomach stuffed with all the good stuff. Yeah. And lots of pepper. Mm, stuff. You also eat the intestines at some point. It all goes through that process before coming out the far end. Look, you if you don't want to know how the sausage is made, don't eat sausage. Nice and easy. I'm not going to think about it. There's nothing wrong with the coffee. For its journey. I, I think this it's quite delicious. This point I will drink anything. I say it is quite delicious. Drink, drink, drink. Boy, I'm gonna have a fun story for Bran after this. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. And here's our host, she says, waving a hand. And behind, you will see a, a pair of other gentlemen enter the room, uh, rounding out your contingent. Uh, there is, at the front, an immense man, um, about... About oh, six feet tall, but broad, barrel-chested, and with quite a substantial gut straining uh, against his um, a straining against the buttons of his vest and long coat. Uh, except that his long coat is velvet lined. It is very comfortable, and the the coat itself uh, appears to be made of some type of stretched material. He approaches. Um, smoking on a large rolled cigar that's clutched between his fat fingers uh, of one hand. Behind him is an equally large but opposite man. Honestly, one of the larger men you have ever seen. An Atlas bodybuilder of a man with long gray hair that hangs limply about his shoulders. He is not handsome. He has the type of face of a man who has been punched many times in his life, punched more times than he has been hugged, with a long aquiline nose that kind of, well, not even aquiline, more like a hooked nose that drips down his face over a pair of thin Germanic lips and jaw. Honestly, if if you ever had to point at someone and say, yeah, that's a big Austrian dude, that this is that guy like this is like this is like like this is like what if you put Schwarzenegger in a bad wig in his 40s and um Josephine I would like you to make me an intelligence and politics role oh exciting okay it helps if my character sheet loads there we go I do not have politics you may make me an intelligence role for this anyway given I got a, I got one eight and two fours. Nice. That right there um, is someone you um, you will recognize immediately. Um, that is is Rudolf Krauser. Banny Titleus. Um a two hundred year old mage uh who is one of the uh one of the current like preeminent title and mages uh to come out of Prussia. Um he is he is known as a master of Surdeman, um, and also a master of just bare knuckles boxing and and combat. Um, you know him particularly because he was on a voyage with uh, a, an, an associate of your mentor uh, when they were besieged upon by pirates around Singapore. And there are stories of this man 
killing people without even the use of magic that are astounding, like grabbing some of these pirates by their legs like they're children and bashing their brains against the side of the boat with his bare hands. Uh, but he is a hermetic through and through. Mm hmm. What was his name again? Uh, Wolfgang. Or pardon me, not Wolfgang. Um, Rudolf Krauser. At least that's the shadow name he uses. Hmm. And uh, behind them, in their shadow, you are going to see a much more average man dressed in dressed in a dark blue suit clutching a hat in front of him he's handsome but somewhat meek and a little pale and Evelyn you'll immediately recognize the face of your husband James Morgan Well, now that we're all here, says the fat man. Suppose introductions are in order. Wonderful to have all of you here tonight. Uh, quick reminder that while you're inside my house, uh, do not use any offensive abilities or magic upon each other or anyone for that matter. You are under the sanctity and safety of this house as is only acceptable in polite society. Every person you meet inside of this house has made that agreement as well. Any type of transportation or telelocation in or outside of the house is strictly barred and quite impossible. However, all of your food, drink, and concerns are to be met, and, uh, I look forward to having you all enjoy this night. For those of you who are accompanying Mr. and Mrs. James Morgan, we have quite an evening prepared for you. I hope you'll enjoy it as we show you around the wares. Uh, in case we have not met yet, I am Duke Hugo Singer of the Golden Guild. And this is my establishment. Wonderful to have you here. Let's see, um, I suppose you've already met, met the rest. Um, we have a couple who are perhaps showing up a bit later, but right now it is us, um, Ulysses Aerosmith, our colonial adventurer, um, Porsche Charrier, our alienist, uh, James Morgan, of course, um, and, uh, Rudolf Johann Krauser, my esteemed guest from across the aisle. And, um, and anyone else that you find in here who is a visitor for those who carry guest passes. We normally don't have quite so many of the feminine persuasion here, but we are fans of ladies inside of this house, except those who are not, and would appreciate uh, that everyone maintain a good degree of politeness and um, reciprocity toward one another. Are we agreed? Of course. of course. Thank you for your welcome. Good, 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 good. And let's see, uh, <laughs> Dr. Freeman, excellent to see you again. And, uh, and you are? Ah, yes, you must be. You must be Lord Macduff. I received your letter, and uh, thank you for allowing this um, much overdue meeting to occur. It's not a problem at all. Happy to bring about uh, closure. Yes, one way or another. Well, uh, Miss Morgan, if you would not mind, please. Yes. Hmm. Every single time somebody has responded, like referred to her as Evelyn Taylor or Mrs. Morgan, anything without the title of doctor, her eyelid twitches a little bit. 
just a quiet little little thing. Hmm. Well, uh, for the rest of you, uh, I would like to entreat you into quite some spectacles that we have prepared for you. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, how about the two of you retire to uh, a more private area to have your discussion? The copy room is no place for this. Um, perhaps, uh, mm, perhaps in the courtyard or somewhere down on the main floor. Um, as, uh, there's also a sitting room around back that would be quite fine for that, as well as a small parlor. However, the rest of you, I would like to move... I would like to move us into the card room. Darcy's gonna turn and just, like, mutter under her breath to, like, Chastity beside her and be like, What have we gotten ourselves into? Um... Hmm. Ah, yes, but first, drinks. Let's head through the lounge first, acquire some beverages, and then see where the night takes us. I suggest that we begin in the card room and then move on to the library and collections. I notice um, that you are a member of the Order of Hermes, are you not? I am. You will be quite impressed with our collections, I imagine. Josephine's gonna distinctly turn towards Evelyn. Be like, Dr. Evelyn, you will be well on your own? Yes, I'll be fine, Josephine. Thank you. Of course. Or you can always just call us if you need us. I will keep that in mind. Good luck, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Darcy. Collections, you say? Uh, Evelyn will mm. take some joy in walking over to offer her filthy arm to her husband. Evelyn, you look um, lovely. Thank you. You're looking well. As you get closer, you say that and actually give him a look over and find that might not be the case. His mm. lip is busted. His eye is blackened. You can see that his nose may have been reset recently. And as you grab his hand, he... Or as you grab his arm, he will flinch slightly. Perhaps we should head somewhere more private to have this discussion. Let's. And with that, the two of them will depart to have their discussion. And the rest of you are left with Duke Hugo Singer. Hey, drinks first to get the old um, to get the old bit lubricated. I do have something that hasn't come out of a cat's, cat's arse. What's come out of a cat's arse? <laughs> oh, you're serious? What, yes, what came out, I reason, came out of a cat's... I've found your coffee, apparently. Well, I hope the gin didn't, because we have a lot of it. It'd be quite the cat. We could add that to collections. You know, as long as there's gin, I'm happy. Hmm. Uh, please come with me to our lounge. Um, there, mind you, there are going to be a number of uh, gentlemen and uh, perhaps a lady or two uh, that will be milling around the place. Uh, they're not part of our specific party. You're welcome to mingle with them, but I ask that you not bring them into the card room or collections as it is a private affair. Noted. Hmm. And with that, um, he will take you over to the lounge to grab some drinks as your party splits up. Uh, at this point, you'll notice that each one of you gets paired off 
with one of them. Porsche Charrier heads over to Chastity, keeping nearby you. Hugo Singer pairs off with the Lord. Aerosmith pairs off with um, with Dr. Vivian. And uh, Darcy, you are paired off with um, uh, with Benjamin as he guides you through. And I think uh, the rest of the game will occur right after we take a quick break to use the facilities and recharge. Uh, so folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hello, we're back. This is the part of the program where we're going to very briefly talk to the chat. Um, so, folks, hello, welcome. Uh, I want to get back into the action, so we're just going to say real quick, thank you for being here. Thank you to Dice Legends for the raid. Thank you for watching. And uh, thanks to Elderbrain for uh, joining us once more. That is a Kickstarter that you can uh, check out right now at the, the linky. Do. Um, ooh, plus one. All right. Whoop. Also, hello ooh. to the new people who are here. I hope you will enjoy the game. It is going to be fun and i'm going to drink out of this fancy cup nice Glass. uh did anybody else have any announcements we got our bones coffee in we got i i opened a thing yesterday and i can't wait to show it off on our oh. uh patreon that's right tomorrow's strict saving for those of those of you who are on the patreon you get the advanced on game of strict saving monday not tomorrow oh sorry i keep thinking it's sunday today i know um and uh you can find me and krista tomorrow morning over on the onyx path uh on twitch.tv slash the onyx path at 9 8 a.m i think you're 8 a.m on sundays oh god is it 8 a.m mm -hmm. why did i say yeah. yes to right? that game uh the game you're... of pugmire at like 8 a.m pacific which is like noon eastern or something like that so that's 8 11 eastern which is great for them uh, but then you can watch us uh, play Spelljammer at noon Pacific, um, where we're running the second half of Chapter 4 of Light of Xerxes, uh, which will take about an hour or two, and then we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to do a How to Run game, where we are going to talk about how to run that those first three chapters of Light of Xerxes. It'll be a lot of fun, and you'll learn some stuff. And I know that some people have already been posting questions and comments and concerns, things like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's all of the, the announcements we have, except for Robin. And I'm going to be at 1 p.m. Uh, at with Trizelta at uh, Plaid Dog Events for an Adventure Dice's charity stream, which is ongoing currently, too. Uh, which is on right now, actually. I think Krista is over there right now, Yeah, she's right? going to, I think, she nine? was in a game, and then I think she's also doing a game, I think it starts at 9. Is there a sense and sensibility so we should definitely raid that when we're done tonight. we are can you make sure to have that that tag ready yes i will don't worry or that that url perfect Please. all right so folks um i love you all but i think it's time that we head back into game um and have a good time all right <clears throat> so without further ado let's head back into mage the ascension and uh pick up where we left off um, and just to give you a quick notice, uh, Jen is going to be leaving a little early tonight. So if she suddenly vanishes from play, don't worry. Jen's fine. Josephine might not be, but Josephine we'll... is fine. Everything is fine. She's immune to fire. Remember? Everything's fine. Well, this is true. Welcome back to Mage the Ascension, the Victorian Age, here on Dork Tales. The sound of clinking glasses and the slow fill of lovely liquid. Sense of juniper, the bite of alcohol, and oh, the garnishes, rosemary, bits of burnt orange, all manner of things made for you by the bartender. A strapping Englishman of his uh, 
of his late 40s who seems to have no end to the level of mixology that he is able to come up with. As he mixes a drink for each of you, he seems to know automatically what you want. Before you can say it, he will say to Chastity, what drink was it that he makes you? Oh, something very hard. Is she into something sweet or does she just want something like super hard? Super hard. Super hard? Yep. Uh, you know what? Let's go... Uh, so for you, um, oh my god, some of these are amazing. Uh, so for you, that'll be, some of these are pretty weak actually. So for, for you, that will just be like, probably like a Manhattan or a proto Manhattan at this, right. at this day. Yeah. Um, for Josephine, he will make a white tiger's milk, which is half a gill of Applejack, peach brandy, uh, an aromatic tincture, 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 uh, sweetened with white sugar, milk, uh, pardon me, the white of an egg beaten to a stiff foam, uh, a quart of pure milk, and it, this is a ridiculous drink. Uh, yeah, English is. milk punch. Six lemons. A, one pineapple? How big is the? Wow, it's a full punch, I guess. Uh, an apple toddy he makes for another, which um, is kind of like a hot toddy just made with like Applejack. Uh, and a couple of other beverages are easily and quickly made for you. And um, before long, all of you will feel a bit of the tension drain from the air. In fact, as the first, the first sip goes down your throat, you will find the tension kind of seep off of you. Anybody who would want to can make me a perception and awareness roll. Indeed. Josephine is sure. suspicious. Um, would resonance apply to this? Mm, sure. Yeah, actually it would. Okay, cool. Oh. Difficulty? Difficulty of eight. Uh, one success. I think I botched. Everything is totally fine. Cool. Three successes. Three um, Josephine. Josephine and Darcy will immediately recognize that there is a bit of magic in the air around this. It seems to be a pretty simple, probably a mind effect, just meant to kind of keep the tension out of the air. Uh, however, what? Oh, um, I don't know if the mind shield I had up would have impact that at all. It, it would, actually. It doesn't work on you. Um, but Chastity, as you are s sitting there taking a drink, do um, Portia Charrier leans in and whispers in your ear with those little plump, plum lips of hers. So has the doctor gotten over his proclivities? Has he shaken his unusual habits? Hmm. Shh, we should probably whisper. I can't quite hear you, though. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Wow. Well. Hmm. It would be above me to gossip. Hmm. I see. Well. Is he fucking the other one? What? His little doctor. Um, Dr. Morgan Taylor, whatever. Are they... Not 
knocked him. That is none of my business. Oh, you're no fun. I thought I. I'm plenty of fun. But... Really? I'm plenty of yes. fun too. You want to be fun together? So long as it doesn't mean disparaging my friends. Yeah. How is it disparaging to say that she's acquiring some American dick? See, if you had just said that, we'd be fine. You implied it like it was, like, a bad thing. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's not a bad thing. It's uh, slightly insecure and not quite as uh, much as the rumors or um, stories would suggest thing, but it is a good thing. Quite a, a confident thing. A, a, a cuddly wuddly thing. So are you still upset that he left you? Hmm. I'm upset. That I can he get. Left. I'm upset. I that can he get your mind off that. I'm upset that I wasn't able to help him before he did. It's not. <sighs> it's not an easy thing to live with that um, nature like you you can even see it in the way that you walk you're something of a pervert and a masochist but predominantly the way that you grind your heel and the way that you're twisting your fingers right now says that it's more of a sadism in you isn't it And I'm just saying everyone has their tells. Your nature is vastly dissimilar from my doctor's. Yours is a power trait in a woman. Dr. Freeman's is a damnable condition in a man. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but... Again, not my business. Mm. The Unless... company you keep makes it your business. Word to the wise. Um, but, regardless, you are quite fetching, though. So this is the part where we actually get onto the, the flirting and the... This is the part where we get onto the flirting, yes. Good. Okay. And she'll put her hand on your thigh. Yeah. Chastled. Hmm. She's just gonna have a nice, you know, a drink and just have a nice time flirting. That's her goal here. Darcy, you, you watch um, Benjamin Gardner take a single watered whiskey. Um, cheers. So you're you're Irish. Aye. You're an Iri Aye. You're an Irish witch. That is what what some would call me, yes. Well, then I toast you with this Irish whiskey. <laughs> Irish witch key. That was, that was awful. That was truly awful. Well, yes, growing up in the countryside, countryside, you're a little bit sheltered. I've had to learn my humor in the last six months that I've been in London. It's quite a, a learning curve. We should never learn humor from the British. We're awful at it. Oh, don't worry. I learned it from another Irish woman. Oh, there's plenty to laugh at about the Irish. Ah, oh, just, just as equal, if not more, about the British, though. Oh, of course. But to make fun of the British, usually you have to wait in a queue. That is Let fair. Them, look, we're very good at it. Queuing, yes, you, yes, you're very good at queuing, is what I've heard. I don't quite care for it. I don't see the draw of just standing in line. 
Well, the trick's not about the standing in line, it's about making sure that you get where you're going. And that everyone gets a fair shake. It's, um, organizational. Nothing wrong with that, right? I'm better than in the Americas. I hear. I, I can't say to know much about the Americas. Um, I'm learning about it a bit with my new companions, but uh, I myself don't hear much about it. Only stories. Almost hmm. They're almost mythical at this point. Hmm, I would I love would, to go. would love to meet an actual tribesman someday. But, um... Well, he seems to be handling himself fine. Who? Mm, your lordship. You keep looking at him in the mirror. No. Nothing I don't know of. what. So sorry. Nothing to be ashamed of. Let's just say we got off on the wrong foot, and I feel like I've. Um, I've definitely never kicked a lord in the face before. And now I've done it. And I, neither have I. Um, want one more, please. I I could do with another here as well. Meanwhile, further down the bar, getting your drinks, Krauser will sidle up next to you, Josephine. They say you are hermetic. Is this true? I am. Benitharsis. Benitharsis. Well, you are in rare company tonight. Titleus. I... No. I... Recognized you. Yes. I do cast a long shadow. Feel not. Why? Why, Why are you here? Yeah. I'm here to negotiate for an artifact that they have in custody. Luckily, mm. I have something in custody as well. Hmm. You'll find the Old of Reason is quite civilized when they want to be. And if they're not, you rip their heart out. And show it to them why they die. <laughs> Usually that I, teaches them their manners. I can get behind that. I would not. Spray is quite sufficient. <laughs> yeah. Are you meant to colloquialism? Sorry, could you repeat that? You, may, you meant a colloquialism. Mm -mm. Yes. My English is good, but it's not great. <laughs> I'm still learning. It's such a clumsy language. Mm. It's true, and she's going to switch to uh, Latin and just be like, I do prefer the classics. Yes, the classics are much better. This is much more elegant. A way to communicate. I agree. Who's your master? What has he done? What has he done? <laughs> uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. So she, you can talk about your master. Yeah. Like that. You'll make you'll yeah. make small talk. You'll basically just like small talk a bit. Um, yeah. I would like you to make me a roll for your small tech, actually. I know you're feeling a little ill, Jen. So sure, yeah. let's let this carry over with make me a charisma. Okay. Plus a cult, a charisma plus leadership, a charisma plus 
uh, subterfuge roll. Hmm. All super great for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. I also have damage. Uh, that is one success. One success. So you'll be able to rattle off a couple of things. Uh, and yeah. he'll get bored of you pretty quick. Cool. I see. So you were trained by that one. Mm. Good. Well, now that that we have assembled and discussed the nature of a hierarchy, I wish to go speak to the others to establish and understand where we are inside of the current situation. Of course. I will leave you to drink alone now. And she'll just nod and let him go. And as he walks away, there are a couple of other people milling around inside of the club, inside of the lounge here. And as he walks away, there's someone sitting at the bar that you'll hear right as he steps away. <sighs> what a fucking cat. A look. There's a man next to you dressed in brown breeches wearing a long coat that looks like it's been patched dozens and dozens of times. The long coat is made of thick leather and has a scent about it of age and dust and salt. Mm. Don't like him. No. No, you can smell the politics on his breath a mile away. <laughs> Not the type of man you want around you, really, I think. Mm, he picks it as <laughs> he picks it as yellowed teeth with a long fingernail. Hmm. You don't seem like the type who's normally let into these places. This goes, I ain't nobody let me in. I just walked in myself. <laughs> right, well, I you did. I respect that. Yeah. You held the door for me, Josephine Carrington. How do you know my name? Love. And he slowly turns his head to look at you. You can see that his his face is scarred. His hairline is almost non-existent. What is an existent is pulled into what barely can be described a ponytail at the back, but broad scars crisscross his weathered scalp. And as he turns, you are going to see the candlelight and lantern light of this room reflecting off a brilliant silver orb that was once his right eye. Hmm. Let me tell you, uh, I know a lot more about you than that. Where are my manners? They call me Silver. Silver Eye. Silver Eye O'Karen. It's a pleasure to meet you. No. Don't. <sighs> but life ain't about pleasure, is it? Shouldn't it be? No. It's about freedom. Hmm. and the power to get it think about it if life was about pleasure you could have it forced on you and it would just be pleasure but I can think of a lot of situations where pleasurable things could be forced upon a person and they wouldn't like it too much but if someone was free to pursue the pleasures that they wished 
Those would be pleasurable. Eh? I ain't gonna say the word in mixed company. <laughs> you have a point. Heh. <sighs> Do you want power, Josephine Carrington? I want... I want the power to be myself. Mm, do what I want. Go where I want. Want freedom, I guess. It's a pretty powerful thing. Tell you what. I'll tell you a magical secret. What's that? Ah, you go beat me at a game first. Do I? Aye. He'll reach over and drag two candles across the bar. If you can hold your hand in flame longer than me. You have a deal. And he will put his hand onto the candle flame mm -hmm. and hold it as it begins to crackle against his flesh. She's going to put her hand in the other candle. You know what the difference between me and you is, love? What's that? I don't burn. And as you glance down, you'll see the palm of your hand begin to blacken. Impossibly. And you'll watch the blackness from the soot start to spread across your flesh, dripping up your arm, up your throat. The entire room will turn black in your vision. See you soon. And you will vanish out of the room with <laughs> none of your companions being any the wiser or even remembering that you were here. Oh, this is fine. This is fine. Yep. All that, right. That's, I hope that's you a like good him, out. Jen. Oh Thank no. You. I I do like him. And now we should set that date for my seeking. We will. We will. Your seeking's coming. Your seeking's coming. Yeah. Have a great night, Jen. We will see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, just mute good. and mute and video everything, and I'll readjust it. Do I need to like stop my video and just leave it up, or? Just Is mute that... yourself and throw like a towel over it or something. Okay, cool. Good night, all. Feel better, Jen. Thanks. All right. Uh, so, uh, where were we? So we hope that Jen is feeling better. Um, there's been a lot of wildfire smoke around here, and we think that probably is affecting quite a few of us. But that is a good place to have Jen vanish for the immediate future. Meanwhile, also, that's great. I hope you liked him. Uh, I hope you like his name because uh, that is a, a fun reference to several things. And if you if you guess, you win a prize. I'll tell you at the end of the game, maybe. All right. Meanwhile, upstairs, there's a slight scrape as a chair moves across the floor and a small room met for private meetings, about 20 by 20, paneled in wood is shut. Evelyn, you find yourself inside of this room. The walls are are paneled, as I said, but striped with um, striped with undulating figure eight style wallpaper. And James will shut the door behind behind him as he uh, enters the room alongside of you. You look well. Uh, 
my she... gods. Evie, you... What have you done? You're, you're filthy. It has been an adventurous evening. You are right. Uh, yeah, yes, I have a few minor wounds, but Takes overall, a step forward. I'm just covered in filth. I can get you a, a washcloth if you want one. I don't know I'll be able to make much of a dent in it. I did tell him, by the way, when we were... when this meeting was set up, I told Duke Singer that you preferred to go by Dr. Taylor. I... Imagine that his impropriety was not mine. Um, Sid, I, um, would you, there's a small bar here, would you like a drink of, um, vermouth, gin? After this evening, potentially, Jen. Of, of course, the way you like it, right? Um, a twist of lime. Was it? Was it lemon? Oh God, I can't even. I can't even do something. <laughs> he touches his nose and winces and heads over to pour you a drink. So, you've been well? Uh, I suppose as well as I can be. The number of things that I have done in the last week alone is ridiculous. We can... He slides the drink in front of you and sits down opposite you at the table. It, 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 it can all be forgiven. If you want. I, I've, I've, I've been sp spoken to by some members of the such your transgressions can be forgiven if you come back the order has great use for your skills and I'm certain that they would hold you in high regard. Uh, uh, you've made your... You've made your point. You can come back now. I apologize, James, that my decisions resulted in them treating you this way. Being at the convention and seeing my future in all those grey, sad women sitting there ignored to be used for their ideas and their transcription abilities. 
Seems like a dull, sad future. Uh, Evie, it wouldn't be like that. It w you are an incredibly smart woman. You have a great mind for invention. It, it will be uh, harder, but you've made... You've made your point. They... Look, the, the, the world is changing. And because of women like you, it will be easier for those who follow and, f and for even uh, you. And I... I... I have prepared the documents to re recant the, the, the patent on... on your work, uh, so that it can be properly attributed. I want to support you. And I do believe that you are a brilliant, brilliant and should be celebrated for that. I, I suppose the issue at this point is that I have done something to force them to see me, but I don't see an overall change. I have met so many now whose first response has been respect, who have not cared for my gender. I do love you, James, dear. But I fear staying in your order. I have been given an opportunity to expand horizons, to push science to its limits. You are my wife. You saw a vow. And you're just going to abandon me when Come I... Come with me! I'm willing to forgive your trespass and, and, and traitorous actions. Mine? You betrayed the order. You betrayed me. I saw what they thought of female scientists first. They had no value for me. Done what they could use. Sit quiet, shut up, be in the corner. Don't draw attention. Yes, and the mystic traditions accepted you not because you stole something. You bought your way in there as well. They're using you the same as anyone will use you because that is the way of the world, Evelyn. People use people. Yes, but here I don't need to be quiet. Everything's a bloody transaction in this world. But at least I'm not silenced for being female.
Was I really that bad? We were going to have children. We... it then. I suppose we are both deceived. suppose I will write to my parents and I would leave you with the honor of writing to yours unless you need me to take that responsibility as well I am perfectly capable of writing to my father and myself yes We all disappoint in our own way. I wish you the best of times ahead. Even though, you know, this will not go well for you. It is a dangerous world out there, Evelyn, and I have done my best to shelter and support you as long as I have. I believe I have seen a glimpse of my fate, and I yes, look forward to it. It's been a week, Evelyn. Look at you. I couldn't catch that line. Look at you. It's been a week, look at you. Yes. Yeah, I suppose that's what happens when you tangle with mad scientists and... Get your hands dirty. You... Brought him into all sorts of things. Some of it terrifying, yes. But I feel so alive. And she looks just a little crazy with that one. And he looks a little startled. She's definitely starting to look a little mad scientist, probably to his eyes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I'd always hoped to be Doctor and Doctor Morgan. You seem so much like Father. Yes. I appreciate what we had. And I do hope that you do not suffer for my decision. Not suffer. Yes. No, I do not think I will. I thank you for putting me out of my misery. I 
you would be wise to return the items that you stole from the Order before they force you to. Duke Singer was authentic. None will hurt you while you are in this house. They will find you eventually. They always will. And you I imagine take they will. That. I will meet that day when it comes. afraid I didn't have any of your belongings packed to return to you. I had hoped that this would be an amicable reconciliation. There was nothing particularly precious potentially you could return the jewelry sets to my parents that I brought Evelyn can you make me a perception and empathy roll Uh, detail oriented? Yeah, uh, yes, specifically. Uh, what's the difficulty? Difficulty is gonna be s difficulty is gonna be five. This is your husband. Sweet. Uh, three successes. He's definitely emotional. Mm -hmm. Um, you haven't seen him like this since after his brother died. Which, she also looks that way, like, she's holding it together, but... And then he seems okay for a moment. Like, very okay. So, like, he did something to... Doesn't appear that you didn't notice anything, but just suddenly... He looks up at you. to tell them where the box is. Tell me where it is. You can go on your way. They've assured me that they won't follow you. They'll let you burn your bridge, but they'll stay on this side of it. Why do they want it so much? Where is it, Evelyn? It's not here. Where is it? It is crucial to something they're working on. Well, that you sounds ominous. I implore you. I implore you, Evelyn, please. If you... If you want to leave me, if you want to leave them, make the break clean. You said that everything is a transaction. This is the price. What did you do, James? You abruptly changed there. I didn't do anything. And 
as he says that, you are going to see that his the bruised eye, the white one, is going to start to get a little pink, as if it's bursting blood vessels. What are they doing to you? Thing. They nothing at all. certain what I'm not going to hurt you His hand is going to shake, and he's going to knock over his tumbler onto the floor. It's going to shatter. She will start a little, little, and just... He's going to reach down to pick up the pieces. And he's going to look up at you. Look at your eyes for a good long moment. And then you're going to hear a grinding sound as he takes a piece of the bottom of the tumbler and grinds it into the side of his thigh, shards side down. I think it would be best if you retrieved your party and went with the rest of the guests. I... They want me to get information out of you and I... I will not do it. With me or not, you are still my wife. Leave me or not, I still love you. <laughs> She's gonna look incredibly conflicted. I'll be fine. I'm British. <sighs> Stiff up a lip. And she's gonna start over, kiss him, and leave. Okay, it's not a botch, but it's not good. Uh, oh, you know what? He's going to spend a willpower to hold that in. Okay, cool. And the door is going to shut behind you. Meanwhile, Elsewhere in the manor. How you doing, Christine? Are you okay? You ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the, it's the order of reason. That's what they do. Well, that's not what all of them do. Um. So, um. From that room, you are taken through the rest of the house. Walking through the immense hallways, you are taken first to the card room to play a bit of cards, where eh, it seems not quite as enjoyable. And uh, Duke Singer can absolutely get uh, get that vibe off you. He's like, mm -hmm. well, tell you what, how about we head to the main event? 
think that you'll quite like this. Are you ready? With that, he pushes open a huge set of double doors into an immense library. Inside of it, you can see display cases rounding the room. There are stuff, there's a stuffed Yeti in the corner, full size, its fangs bared from the taxidermy. Other mystical creatures, a, a strange, it kind of looks like, like a serpent, but it's feathered has been stuffed and hung overhead as if it is still in serpentine flight. Well, please enjoy yourselves. Take a look around before the real festivities begin. <laughs> Our newest addition to the collection. What's wrong? You look bored. No, just, um, these are some very interesting collections you have here. Absolutely. Seized and acquired through uh, righteous endeavor. Very British of you, yes. <laughs> You're a witch, are you not? Have you ever wondered? how they did it, the heathens in Egypt. Come, uh, did, look at this. Did what? Witchcraft. This. <clears throat> he wipes a little bit of dust off a display case. We really should fire the maid. Um, this. Uh, my Egyptian is not as good as it used to be. Uh, this is either the Book of Life or the Book of Death, depending on how you look at it. Perhaps here. Oh. Do you know Brunei? Brunei? Brunei's? This! He reaches up and taps the side of a, a, of a completely flayed skull that's sitting on a display case. This used to be a Maharaja of Brunei. Powerful warlock of some kind. Huh. Yeah, he was. And now we have his skull. Ah, but you, you, Miss, um, uh, uh, Miss Temperance, are, um, a religious bent. I can see from the cruciform you wear around your throat. Sorry, were you addressing me? Yes. Uh, it's chastity or prudence, not temperance. Right, you have many virtues, uh, but perhaps I should show you uh, an object of vice. Come. Look. Lead the way. Oh, I have no need. Look behind you and gaze upon artistic brilliance. Looking behind Chastity. you. Yeah, turn around. There is a book roughly the size of your torso inside of a display case. It's a good two feet tall, a foot and a half thick per page with <laughs> the bindings are rivets made of bone and as you look down you have very little thought that the pages are made of anything other than well, skin it is penned in a dark reddish brown hmm. And on its page, you'll see there's tons of Latin and Latinate languages written, uh, but there is an image of a fat horned devil with um, all of the drooping bits that are, are actually were pretty common back in 15th century grimoires. If you can make me an intelligence and a cult role to recognize this. Okay. 
you know what that is? What's my difficulty for it? Difficulty on that is going to be eight. Success. Uh, uh, it is a book called the Codex Gigas. Uh, you may Google that if you would like for additional information. Do you know what it is? Yes. Um, is it a real copy? Lord Macduff will say. Depends on your point of view, I imagine. Quite real. Quite real. But, uh, Miss Prudence, you were saying? Just, it's... Impressive. Hmm. Um, now, are you just trying to butter me up? Do you actually know which it is? I've heard of it. Have you, Miss... Uh, Scarlet? I'm sorry, what was your name, um... Uh, 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 Irish girl, I, I, I apologize. Uh, names are not my strong suit. Procurement is. You can call me Miss Harkness. Oh, Miss Harkness. Miss Harkness. Harkness, Harkness. Harker. Related to the insurance agent, Mr. Harker. No, Harkness, sir. Ah, I see, yes. I recently had some dealings with her. With a, uh, a Mr. Harker, I thought you might be in relation. No, I don't. I don't. Do you know what this book so. is? Um, I, I, I didn't realize that you were asking for everyone. I thought you were just asking for chastity. No, I was just asking for so. chastity. But if you could take a look, you can make me an intelligence to call roll. Um. Okay, I don't have a cult. Okay, then you'd have no idea. Uh, no, I've never, never seen anything like that. It looks like a devil, though. Ah, oh, it is. It's the devil. The Lord says, stepping over and looking at it. Gigas Codex. A bestiary. The damned. It's bad luck to have something like this, this close to you. Who knows who will try to take it from you. This book belongs with the Nefondi. Duke Singer, are you aware that uh, this is the type of text that would be owned by a Barabbas? Perhaps you know a few. Uh, I'm a collector, sir. Nothing more. I should ask you the same question. Here that you dabble in investigations involving such vile specimens. I do what I have to. It's important to keep the world a slightly better place. How? Is that the Book of D? Sorry, how, how did you find your way to this? This book, <laughs> the Codex Gigas. Uh, well, it was inside of a den of iniquity, uh, held in um, in a black mass in, uh, hmm, I believe it was uh, Lower Scotland near Hadrian's Wall. In this, it was in a black abbey, and. Um, was being used to summon demons in a carnage filled orgy, if I'm not mistaken. My hunters went in, cleared it out, not a problem, not a problem at all. We only lost 20, 30. That, that, that is quite a significant amount of life you, you to, lost acquiring To book. procure something that could summon a demon that could kill a hundred more? I think not. So it's, how little is our lives worth for you for acquiring such objects? I mean, we lost a number that was almost five, four to one. 
on, on value gained? It's all a numbers game, love. I don't see humans as numbers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do, actually. Tell you what, you have brought uh, five friends with you tonight. Were I to pull out a gun and give you the option, here, actually, I'll, I'll make a demonstration. And he opens a case and reaches in, and there is an immense <laughs> revolver inside of there. Hmm. There's cowboys. You see, six chambers. And if I were to say, I will let you choose how many bullets to load. I may load as many as six or as few as none. And for each one that I load, I will press this gun between the beautiful eyes of each of your companions, and I will pull the trigger. I think you would learn to count by the third or fourth, at least. <laughs> would you not? I think I would choose none. I don't know if why I would take such mm. a risk to put in bullets Fruit. in a gun well, to shoot my friends. Then in that case, um... Hmm. Oh, what is that problem? The trolley was spoken. Was spoken of. Show more of the exhibits, Hugo. You hear Portia say. So, sorry, one last question. Mm -hmm. Um, who else knows that you have this? Uh, quite a few people. It's quite warded and protected. And also, I presume, quite coveted. Hmm, well, so is that. He gestures over toward a display case with several wards surround- well, several wards, as you would see, but it does have, like, a nice symbol on it that you'll recognize as a prominent New York City st uh, safe manufacturer emblazoned on the side because that's how words work in the uh, in the golden guild um it's acme um <laughs> it used to mean something different um and looking in there you will see that there is a wooden bejeweled chalice quite lovely is it not Jazz is going to wander over to get a closer look, just trying to keep it casual. Would you like a drink from it? And if you believe truly, it will make you live forever. Is what You're say. saying you found the Holy Grail. I found a grail. Perhaps it is holy. Perhaps it is unholy. The trick is that... Uh, Miss Prudence, do you believe it to be holy? Do you believe that a man would have the ability to pay someone to acquire it? Once something is a physical object, it's... Mm, really no, you believed it. Um, Cheria, yes, she did believe it. For a moment. There's the tick. If people believe that value is valuable, then it is. The same goes with human lives. I suppose. Well, I can't say that I agree with that, says um, uh, Ulysses Aerosmith. Whenever I go into the fray, my men, my men are first on my mind. I believe that we should return with as many as we set out with, if not more. Well, be that as it may, you can see that, yes, the Book of D and, um, oh, and, uh, yes, uh, you were looking to bargain for this, were you not, um, 
Mr. Krauser. He gestures to another case, and you can see that there is a sword inside of it, placed next to a scabbard. The sword is a long, thin blade, more of a stabbing sword than anything, built in a an Eastern style. In this era, they would call it Oriental, but go. Um, it's a long, thin blade. Mm, nothing like any of you have seen before. It looks kind of like a bayonet more than anything. The cross guard is made of a pair of what look like phoenixes, birds, crisscrossing each other. There is a bright scarlet ribbon, no tassel, hanging from the bottom of the hilt. It's a one-handed blade. Right at the palm. Yes, that is what I'm looking for. And I brought the pages that you have asked for. Good. I suppose this will be a fair trade then. Uh, we will uh, finish those. Um, we will finish the transaction. Uh, after the main event. Chastity, as you're standing there, Charrier will lean into you. I wouldn't worry, he always gets a little pause. You see? He... Well, Sorry. Um, if we're all done, let the festivities begin. What say you? What kind of festivities would they We're going to <laughs> We're going to have a um very interesting evening. Allow me. I hate to spoil the surprise. He leans forward, grabs a long length of cloth, and starts swaying it back and forth, setting off a chime ringing a loud bell down the hall. And that is when you'll hear thunk, roll, 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 the sound of wheels rolling your direction from down the hall. Darcy's gonna lean over to Chastity and go, I don't have a good feeling about this. Roll, roll, oh. roll, 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 roll. A slight squeak, I even. don't either, but I don't know that we have much of a choice. No, I feel very trapped right now. Shh. Across from you, mm. Lord Macduff looks over takes a step toward you and puts a hand on Darcy's elbow without really continuing to lock eyes with you, but standing in sidestep with you. You're both fine. Everything will be fine. If you promise not to kick me in the head, I'll promise not to let anything happen to you here. deal because right now I'm feeling a little bit like an animal about to be locked in a cage I just remember animals like that bite and they bite hard hey hey suddenly a dark shadow will cross the doorstep and you'll hear the sound of wheels suddenly veering, like almost like a shopping cart being pushed sideways as an immense coffin. No. No, what is it called when they're made of stone? A sarcophagus rounds the corner. An old yellowed brown sarcophagus marked with hieroglyphics. The lid has been removed. And as it rolls into frame, 
into the light of the library, you will see that it has within it a desiccated human body wrapped in old dry linen clutching its shoulders with each hand crisscrossing its arms ceremonial headdress made of silver and gold placed on its face right well you are the guests here so here if you don't mind and to the four of you dr freeman keeping quiet at the back his eyes low the lord macduff standing next to you strong and proud and chastity and darcy he offers a pair of shining surgical shears come let's have an unwrapping party Go on. Let's see what the inside of a king looks like. I I've got to say I'm not too comfortable with this idea. Um uh Oh don't fright. You're not going to break his heart. It's actually in that jar behind you. <laughs> The one with the jackal head, I think. Your lord is mo- uh, your lordship is most gracious. Perhaps you should go first, as a matter of station. I'd hate to deprive you of such joys. Ah. I suppose I did bring you here and I did pay for this, but please come, come closer. Who knows, there might even be some, uh, some snuff or jerky left inside of him. Have you never tried it? Uh, no, I can't say I have. A bit peppery. and he will lean over and plunge the surgical scissors into the crotch of the mummy as it is the lowest place to cut along the torso. Snip, snip. And he will begin the slow and arduous task of grinding through the linens. Now they're old and they cut easy, but they are papery, wafery thin. But they're very, very crunchy and resistant to his strong cutting. Mm. 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 Seems like it's a bit... A bit... There we are. Oh, God. Oh. And... Oh... There's a plume of aromatic scents tossed into the air. Centuries of centuries of perfumes. Shasti's gonna start trying to subtly sidle her way a little towards the door if she can, or at least just out of the direct everything. <laughs> mm. And down the hall, you are going to hear a door slam. Evelyn, you can hear the sound of that boisterous, booming voice of, of Duke Singer down the hall. I suppose I will head that way. I'm going to try and do quiet. So kind of moving on my toes versus walking because old fashioned boots would definitely have made a nice click. But I'm assuming there might be a runner down the hallway. That would be a fairly luxurious thing. Yeah, very, very plush, a very plush carpeted run. All right. So she's going to try and not 
She can try and do it on her toes so that she makes very little noise on that plush carpet. And she would rather end up back in the group with her friends and Lord Macduff sure. as a buffer against the others. Yeah, you'll be able to. You cross the room to meet up. And um, as you do, you will see that, um, well, the Duke is too invested in this. And to his credit, um, Krauser, the, the Hermetic, is very invested as well. Aerosmith can't take his eyes off of it. It's all quite fascinating. And even morbidly fascinating, perhaps, to at least one of you. In fact, the Lordship, Lord Macduff, is watching curiously. Strange what you think happens to a king, eh? I don't don't feel good about him doing that to him after his arrest. No arrest for the wicked. We don't know that that king was wicked. He probably was, but we don't necessarily know that. Evelyn, what are you going to do? Is it time to go, or do you want to stick around? Um... I will try and slip in and kind of say, we should probably go very quietly. Probably try and slip behind Lord Macduff and say it. I understood. You have been most hospitable, your dukeship. Uh, but it appears that pressing matters are calling us elsewhere. Oh, really? Hmm. Unfortunate. Are all of you ladies going to be heading off? I thank you for your hospitality, my lord. It's It has been quite a, a show of knowledge and um, extravagancy. One that I, I certainly will never experience again in my lifetime. Or she's going to put on the, the country girl act of like innocent <laughs> kind of naivety. Well, you're free to go whenever you'd like. Where is Benjamin? I thought Benjamin followed us in. I suppose he's probably checking on uh, on that husband of yours. You didn't kill him, did you? No. Of course wouldn't be, not. Wouldn't be able to. Inside of this house. I mean... Hmm? So you've been most hospitable um but I, I think it is i am afraid i desperately need a change of clothes and a freshen up so it has been quite a trying night for us so um it, we should oh, also uh, be where getting are my there. Uh, yes of course ladies i apologize and um should you ever require uh, further enlightenment um merely send a missive i would be happy to entertain you again as would others of arun's lodge Thank you so much. Much appreciated. I know. I know that it is. Um, it's quite late, ladies. You can not hold in the yawn on my account. Uh, I know that it is quite a, a bit of hubbubaloo between our sects. But, as I always say, never let sex get in the way of a good thing, eh? <laughs> you're quite the charmer my lord I'm not but you're kind to say that I am as long as I am the master of this house none of you have anything to fear if you come here in good faith is what I'm saying thank you Well, back to the mummy, I suppose. Enjoy. Mm. Yes. 
Oh, um... On the way out, uh... Vivian, you remember Brendan. Send Brendan up. I think he would be quite a kick out of this. A stable boy. Big dude. Egypt. Hmm. They go back to investigating the body. As you turn to be to head out. How is Evelyn looking? Because I think Darcy's gonna be like quite concerned about Evelyn. Composed yeah. but clearly a little upset. Darcy will um, give her But the a moment hand we have squeeze. a moment out in go quiet where she can kind of quickly whisper that they were clearly talking, viewing through him. They are going to be waiting to to try and find her. The sooner we leave London, then the better. Oh, as you're walking down the hall, you'll hear hard footsteps behind you. Vivian! It's Charrier, the alienist. One word before you go. Dr. Freeman takes a few steps forward, uh, and she will quickly say something into his ear. Does anybody listen or try to listen in? Cool. Make me a perception yeah. and alertness roll to try to listen in. Yeah, I think like I'll at least pay attention. I won't try and move closer or anything like that, mm. but... So that was perception and alertness? It's going to be perception and alertness, difficulty seven. Detail-oriented does not apply. Okay. Three uh, successes? Two successes. I rolled two nice. tens. Two? Okay. You'll get the most of this, um, Chastity. The other two will get a good sense of it. I know you're not going to come back but I wanted to say that I'm sorry I couldn't fix you. Be kind to yourself. Would be smart. And the part the chastity will hear that the rest of you will not hear is, don't go back to Paris. Don't go back to Paris. They will find out. Be well. You be well as well, Miss Cherrier. Dr. Cherrier. Portia. Well. Time to go and spend time with a crusty old noble which one I was gonna say and there's also the mummy there there's too. also the mummy see I should have <laughs> spoken to you hmm but I probably wouldn't have made any headway given no. and she's going to turn around and walk back into the room after kind of doing a little, she does a little finger dance between Darcy and someone else. We need to be getting out of here. Shall we? Yes. <laughs> yep, this is definitely all of us. Why do I have this weird feeling? Ah, it's, it's nothing to worry about. It's because you left the cat in the carriage. <laughs> That's right. I was wondering where Bran was. I, I left him in the carriage, you're right. Don't worry, the cat's fine. We'll make our way out now. I hope you got everything you were looking for, Evelyn.
suppose as much as I could have. Are you okay, Dr. Taylor? It's hard. They've hurt him so much. Well, maybe. Maybe by things being more or less acquainted, they won't use him against you. I doubt it. So they seem quite adept at using what they have, churning it up and spitting it out. And if they don't see value, they ignore it. Well, it's their loss for the value that they've lost with you. I think they're more worried about what I took. Very quietly, like, yeah. very and much as, so that unless somebody walked right next to me, would not hear. As you say that, the camera is going to follow you. It's actually going to pull back as you walk down the stairs into the main foyer. And as we pull back, we will see you just as you get into your carriage. Miss another carriage approaching. As you head off into the night, the second carriage halts. The doors will open and you will see three men. One huge and bulky, one lithe and tall, and one short and scrawny. And next to them is a woman with pouty lips, dark hair, dyed in electric blue. And behind her, another man exits. His skin is slick, and as he steps down from the carriage, the rudimentary shocks that keep its wheels aligned groan and spring back up nearly a foot from the weight displacement. They were just here, she says in a distinctly North American accent. All right, Rusty. Let's find these bitches and get me my fucking box. And then they will push into the lodge. And I think that is where we're going to call game for tonight. Oh my goodness. Ah. Do you have fun? Yes. Also, I love I love the oh, end yeah. where it's like, I think we forgot something. Nah. Nah. I nah. need that meme. Nah. Nothing. Nothing nah. important. Nothing, nothing, nothing important. All. Feels like you're forgetting nothing at all. Nothing <laughs> at all. Stupid see stupid sexy seeking. <laughs> hmm. All right. So folks, Jen also hope, had fun. Jen also yeah. had fun. I'm glad you had fun, Jen. I was paying attention. Oh, you hate that music cue? Oh, it just I I no, I love it. I hate that, how it made me feel hearing that like at the initial grind. It was just like, ugh. See, I, I, have two, I have two the music bad tracks. guys came for. So there, there are two music tracks that you get used to this game. This one, yeah, mm -hmm. which is indicative of one group. Mm -hmm. But then there's also when this hits. 
and that hits me deeper. Yes, that one hits me mm. deeper. I don't, I don't, re I didn't recognize the other one as I, had, I haven't heard it as much before. Maybe it was earlier. It was we've mostly heard it in lot. game one. Yeah. This one though, this one yes. hits deep. Yeah, that one hits. That makes me that there's a there's just like a pit that forms in my stomach <laughs> when I hear that one. I even know who the like I. Th this is this is my evil character, and it still makes me feel sick. You yeah. Know? No, so. I just like even now it's just like oh I can that my stomach's just like ooh. ooh yeah. Ooh. I know, right? It's great. It's great. It's so That's good. why I, lo I love having you you all in my game. Um. All right. So, folks. Um. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Mage: The Ascension of the Victorian Age. Uh. Mummy unwrapping parties. Real thing. Real thing that you didn't know you hated. Uh, yeah. Also, gross. And I feel like that really hit the feel of what they seem like they would be like, having read a lot of descriptions of them. Um, also, like the talking about like, oh, what do mummies taste like? The, uh, we don't have a lot of mummies these days because they were eaten. Yeah. Or used in paint. Or used in paint. They were used as medicine. Or fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Fertilizer. Yeah, fertilizer. Mostly, mostly cats, because we found yep. 100,000 mummified cats, and we used them in fertilizer, which yep. if you go watch that episode of uh, The Order of Reason, which I really want to run more of that, because playing, like, magic cops oh at the turn of the century is so funny. I would love so to do that. Just I, I totally forgot I was... I would... I, was, I forgot about that character. It was great. I, would, I was going to have, if you were there a little while longer, I did have Edwin... Edwin was in the building, but just busy. And <laughs> Edith was on her way and was going to have a very like, oh, Dr. Taylor, you're back, right? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> she's an ex. Oh, missed you around the office. <laughs> I missed you around the office. Or however Crystal voiced very, her. Yeah, beep, 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 beep. Uh, I was quite proud of my uh, mustache as Benjamin. Yeah, I liked mine. I, I think I did mine. a very good job with my stubble and my little mm -hmm. pencil mustache. He was very dapper. He mm -hmm. was dapper. He was we were dapper. dapper boys. Oh, yeah. Yep. It was All funny because right. I actually looked surprisingly like my brother when I did that. <laughs> yeah, you really do. You do with any, um, any, any like, of the, the boy swap apps or anything like that as it's well. It's not All quite right, as, so... like, decent looking as my brother is, so. Yeah, I look like a, a weedier a version. testosterone. <laughs> Um, all right, so folks, that is going to be it for us tonight. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Um, total, uh, the chat bought you two points of experience. I'm going to give you the standard three that I like to give you for a total of five XP. It's going to go to you tonight. Um, also, uh, as we're on our way out, I just wanted to thank all of our patrons at patreon.com slash dorktales. Um, for example, my world building producer, Shulton, who apparently has been working on some really dope stuff, um, which I'm excited for for a future homebrew game. Um, uh, my divine producer, DM Michael Gray, my demonic producers, uh, Soul Omen and Precarious, and of course, Terran, Buddy, Amberthist, Aeolus, Cubby Gummy, Trizelta, and The Traveler. You're all fantastic, and you keep the channel running because this is this is a job, bro. Um, but uh, thank you so much for everything, uh, folks. I hope you you guys you guys had fun, and I hope you all had fun. Um, I feel like I need to go have tea and something chocolatey because you finally Aww. made me cry on stream. <laughs> oh, that was so. I wanted to give the biggest hugs. It was just like, oh, oh, like, oh this oh is my hard. God. This is hard. So this you have you have cry. quite the fan club though. Now we want to see <laughs> Evelyn do. show up in the TARDIS. I want a T-shirt that says "Doctor Taylor is my doctor" on a T-shirt, <laughs> or Evelyn uh, Taylor or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I could will, use a t-shirt like that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Taylor is... Evelyn Taylor is my doctor. Yeah, yeah, I think it's... But yeah, no, at the end there, like, I couldn't really respond to anything at the very end because I was literally having, like, tears just run down my face. Yeah. Luckily, it, it didn't show up much on yeah, camera. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't show up on camera, so you But if I hadn't up... been able to stop there, you would have heard my voice breaking and all that because I needed that time to just listen to you guys to, like... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> gotta, gotta bring it back Let's together. Get it. Well, together. Got James is out of the picture for a little bit at least. That's oh. so rough though. Oh, I think she's gonna put her ring like himself. on a chain and wear it because like Aww. she still really cares for him. She's just yeah. not like okay with like them making an exception because she pushed them into doing it because she knows she'd get shunted away in the end. Like they would find a way to punish her. It's true. So she'd rather be somewhere where they kind of seem appreciative from the start of women. So women are pretty cool. 
gonna put yeah. it out there like more than half of my favorite people are women don't show your friends are women most yeah. this is this is why most but anyway uh folks that's gonna be it for us tonight thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you next time uh we're gonna be back in two weeks for this because i'm away next saturday uh but we'll be back and before then if uh, keep an eye out definitely on the patreon i'll probably post something on the youtube as well uh for uh josephine seeking which is going to be happening in the next couple weeks as well i'm uh, excited to listen to that because i've yeah. never seen a seeking before and then i know darcy has one eventually too and i'm like okay what i'm is paying this? for one what is this yeah i've actually never no i've had one haven't i in lark the first lark yeah. i had one mm -hmm. but I don't remember a lot much about it anymore. They're they're I, I designed them to be fever dreams, so hopefully it'll yeah, be good. Yeah, that's great. I'm I'm super excited to listen to it. To... Hopefully it'll be good. I've never I feel had like a... one that Joe's. features Evelyn is going to be a much harder hitting for me than it was for like with Sarah. Yeah, it's I did not know much about role playing when I did Sarah. <laughs> you gotta get yeah. into it, right? I mean yeah. I'm interested to see what Kelly comes up for for thinking... Darcy. I'm like how the, the difference between my seekings for like my first mage character versus my technocrat was a dramatic difference mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy it makes a big difference but um we'll mm -hmm. see you next time guys so uh have a great night bye